Hey there, what lurks beneath? It's Brian again. I messaged you a few weeks back about what I believe to be a vampire cult hidden Blue Ridge Mountain Range of the eastern United States. Well, I got a couple of more interesting stories and accounts for you. Several, actually, on different subjects, in which I will send to you in another email here shortly. But for now, this email, I wanted to tackle the sightings and encounters I've heard and read about on mermaids. While many might believe mermaids to be this fantasy, bright, bubbly creature, as portrayed in the Disney films, I'm here to tell you that based on stories, accounts, and encounter stories, they are nothing like that. They're hideous, and quite hostile, to say the least. Nearly drowning a few victims, have human-level intelligence, if not smarter, and just like dolphins, swim in packs or ponds. I'm not sure what you would refer to a pack of mermaids as, but they are very intelligent beings. I have a staggering amount of stories and encounters of just mermaids alone that I could share with you, that I've heard about, read about, and that have been personally shared with me. I think more than any other water cryptid there is out there. Maybe that's saying something about the world, and the condition in which things are kept hidden, but that would end up in an email probably two to three hours long for me to write out. So I'll keep this short. The first one I'll share with you is from two fishermen outside of Greece. They both were attacked by about three or four of these things, nearly torn out of their boat. One almost had his arm torn off his body. Everything they caught was also stolen. I couldn't quite get out of them the size of the boat they were in. It wasn't just a small rowboat, but it wasn't an industrial-sized fishing boat either. It was just the two of them, and they were off the coast just a little bit. These things jumped on board and nearly killed both of them. Both of these fishermen, by the way, have requested to remain anonymous in case anything would come back, harming their career, which isn't really much of a career, if you ask me, but that's besides the point. The one fisherman, who was bitten and scratched, ended up with a deep infection in his left arm. It started oozing this aquamarine blue ooze that he had to get treated at the hospital. It was highly infectious had high amounts of unknown bacteria, or so the hospital told him. This was also pre-COVID, and he was lucky, being told by the hospital staff. Had he neglected to get the proper medical attention sooner, he would have had to have had his arm amputated, because whatever this ooze or pus was, it was severely infecting his entire arm. I don't even know how to comment on that. I know nothing about that ooze, or what these creatures did to him. Perhaps it's some sort of venom they produce in some glands they might have. I'm not too sure, but that's not the first time that I've heard about this green-blue ooze that these creatures leave behind. Yet, another terrifying account that I had heard was an older gentleman who was sailing off the coast of the Florida Keys, not too far from shore. He was surrounded by about seven or eight of them on his boat. And while the two sailors from Greece didn't give me a great description of these beings... He did, and it did seem to coincide with the two sailors from Greece. These beings were like a deep blue color, very humanoid, almost half fish, half creature, huge, large black eyes, almost non-existent lips, and a non-existent nose, except for two little nostril holes, webbing and fins all over its body. It definitely looked like it belonged in the ocean, or that it was a failed science experiment, is what he said. These things emerged from the water and all made this weird clicking humming noise in unison, almost as if they were communicating to each other. What? I don't know. But after that, they departed, and they were not seen after that. This older gentleman didn't exactly see where they went, because he said it was like they suddenly disappeared. He has never been that frightened in all of his life, and he's lived in southern Florida his entire life has never seen anything like what he saw that day. It scared him for a while, but I think now he's going out back fishing and sailing again. Good for him. About six or seven years ago, I received an email from someone who called themselves Jack. They, back in 2001, were actually detained by the military because they were on the Gulf Coast of Texas and were on the beach when this creature washed ashore. He said he got a pretty good look at it, even took pictures. 
said it looked exactly like what you'd expect from a mermaid creature. Not the way that Disney portrays them, but ugly, hideous, half fish, half man, except more ugly, more evil looking, webbings and spines all over it, large black eyes. I was shocked to hear it was the same description the old man gave me when I compared the two stories, said it had a mouthful of shark-like teeth and was completely horrified at what this creature was. It was taller and longer than him, having a long fish-like tail and fin behind it. Shortly after, before he even left the beach, a squad of military police arrived, detaining him, taking his phone, and closing down the entire beach. It was early in the morning, so he has no idea how the police or the military police knew about this. He was really the only one at the beach at the time, just on a morning walk, is what he explained to me in the email. He was detained, questioned, and actually arrested and put in jail for about a month. Not like county jail. It was a special military jail, is what he told me. He was questioned every day what he saw and what he would refuse to tell the public if it got out. He was given ample threats that he did not see anything and he was to not tell anybody what he saw. He would not have any of his questions answered either. And that's a scary thing. He was released, but didn't end up sending me this email till, what, 13, 14 years later after this happened. He still doesn't even know what's going to happen to him. Maybe he'll be arrested. He's not sure. He doesn't even know if he's being watched. But he felt it was important to reach out to other cryptozoologists and share their accounts and information. He was very adamant about the government or military trying to hide and cover up something. Why or what? His theory was that these are being created, bioweapons, and that some of them are failing. Either that, or they're being purposely killed and then thrown into the ocean and washing up. Perhaps they are failed experiments and don't meet all the requirements. But if that is the case, you think they'd have a better disposal other than just throwing them in the ocean. These are just speculations. I can't be too sure. Either way, Jack's account is just as horrifying as any other one. Then we have Macy from Southern California, south of San Diego at the time of the sighting. Her and her young son were walking along the beach in a more deserted section when she says that her and her son were startled by this humanoid creature coming out of the water, running right at them, chasing them. She said it looked horrible, very ugly, kind of somewhat like the creature from the Black Lagoon, but also very fish-like, said it had sharp spines all over its body, and it was a dark green to almost a black color. Her and her son didn't stand there looking too long. They booked it and ran for their lives. This thing continued to chase them until it got to about waist-deep in the water, and then resubmerged. She has no idea what that was all about. During this happening, they were probably about shin-deep in the water. While I can't be too certain that this was a mermaid creature, it was definitely falling into the category of a humanoid fish oceanic creature. Perhaps a mermaid, perhaps not. Either way, I've attached it to the underwater cryptid section and thought you might appreciate it. Then, back in the early 70s, 1972, I believe if I can remember right, an English submarine was actually attacked by about 12 of these things, nearly taken down and sunken. This thing was about 200 miles off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean of England. For the sake of continuity, I'll just refer to these groups of mermaids as pods. So an entire pod approached this submarine and attacked it, for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Being under attack from an unknown source, the submarine and all the crew in it panicked, not sure what to do, so they fled off. And actually, the submarine made it, but once back to land and once being able to be rescued, the exterior damage was so bad that it was almost a surprise they even made it back to base. There were deep scratch marks all along the metal of the entire submarine. Scratch marks that when measured would equal out slightly larger than that of a human hand and even fit the hand profile of five different fingers or four fingers and an opposable, but dagger like claw marks. The back of the submarine was what took the most damage and was the most frightening. 
The rudders were bent and nearly almost torn all the way off, and the propeller badly damaged. Something with enough intelligence put all of its effort and focus into damaging that back part, as if whatever it was knew that that's how the submarine steered and propelled itself. That's terrifying. And I know there is no definitive proof. Evidence points out that they were attacked by something. Something that was humanoid and in groups, and was smart enough and intelligent enough to not only strategize, put all of its effort towards the back, where the submarine steers and controls itself. Like I told you, the damage was so bad, it's a miracle of God that the submarine even made it back without fully sinking. That's how bad the damage was. In fact, the submarine was actually rendered inoperable for several months due to severe repairs. This story was shared with me by a retired English Navy captain who served in the English Navy for well over 30 years. And of course, in my opinion, one of the most frightening and first-hand accounts that I've ever been told occurred in South Africa back in the late 80s by a scuba diver, a scientist and exploring more bio-life form, but to what degree he never told me. He said to me that he witnessed a great white shark being torn apart by four or five mermaid, half-human, half-fish looking creatures. He never referred to them as mermaids, but knowing what I do, that's the only conclusion I can come to. He gave considerable details that all matched up with all the previous accounts I shared and many of the accounts and stories that have been told that I just simply don't have the time to share with you because, well, there are so many. On a quick note though, in South Africa, at a certain time of year, many of the world's seals gather there, which makes a huge hunting and feeding ground for sharks. So you'll see a lot of sharks gathering there. This was right around that time of year, so it wasn't uncommon for you to run into a shark or seals. But being a scientist and having intelligence about the water and sea life, he knew how to keep his distance and where to be to do what he had to do. When he went on to talk about these half-fish, half-man humanoid creatures, he says they arrived in a group, and they arrived from the bottom, the darkness of the ocean, is what he said. They didn't come from the east or west, but underneath. He told me that he's never seen that kind of intelligence before. They definitely, like dolphins, strategized, worked in a group, and killed this shark, probably within 20 seconds. It also appeared they had crude, like spear-looking things that they used to stab and rip apart this shark. He also mentioned that they were very hideous looking, large black eyes, spikes and fins all over their body, and were nearly a dark green black color, the same as fitting all the other descriptions that I've heard and stories that I've been told. Very strange indeed. He said he was mostly frightened by how intelligent they appeared to be and how they worked so seamlessly and synergized together in a group. At one point, they all turned to notice him in the water, in which he was now panicking, because here he was, out in the middle ocean, with some unknown humanoid species not far away. They ignored him, though, and took parts of the shark that they ripped apart, and took the entire shark cadaver with them, down into the dark waters below. That was enough for him. He said he was so frightened after the experience, he retired from marine biology for several years after that, refusing to do any more expeditions on research. The man who shared this story with me also wishes to remain anonymous, but has very credible sources, and is even taught at a professor at multiple universities all across the world in marine biology. He is renowned, and if I told you his name, it would be easy to find out who he is. But I'll respect his wishes, so he doesn't damage any of his reputation. That's all the stories I have time for you today. I'll send you one here in a couple days about tons of sightings of Mothman that people have all over the lower eastern United States and all around Point Pleasant. Thank you so much for being a great resource to talk to and to be able to share these horrifying stories. Thank you also for sharing them. I'm sure the people who hear them will appreciate that there are things out there more than we can ever imagine. And that's part of the reason why I want to share these with you, because I know you'll get them to your audience. And the more aware we can make people, maybe the more lives we can save in the long run. Or, if anything, 
the more aware we can make people.